morning, church. It's Monday morning. Take your Bibles and go to Genesis 1-1, the first part of your Bible. Probably one of the most asked questions is, uh, what about the Trinity? Does the Bible teach the Trinity? Is the word Trinity found in the Bible? Uh, what about the Trinity? Well, it's one of the most important questions that we could ask. Uh, let me just say from the get-go, no one can perfectly understand the Trinity. Uh, that God is one God, we all believe that for most part, the, the solid Christian family that believes there's only one God. We also believe that God makes himself known to us as a father, as a son, and as the Holy Spirit. So we, we believe those things, but we're kind of trying to reconcile how can there be one God if Jesus is God and the Father's God, that makes two, and if the Holy Spirit's God, that makes three. So there's three gods, and we try to reason it out. But I'll just tell you that there's no way the human mind can completely grasp the things of God. We're not, we're not, we're finite human beings. We're not infinite. We're not uh, all knowing, and so therefore we can't comprehend everything. It's when we try to reason it out that we get into trouble. Cults spring up like the Mormons, uh, like the Jehovah's Witness, the Unitarians, because they're they're grappling with this idea that. Okay, Jesus is God, but he's not the true God. He's not the one God who created the heavens and the earth. He came along later and he is God and a God, but he's not the God who created. And so they, they, in their minds, they can't fathom how God can be only one God, and yet Jesus is God, the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God. But we just accept it by faith. God has revealed to it in Scripture, and he does it from the very get-go. Genesis 1-1, I want you to notice how this is all framed, beginning in Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God, okay, this is the word, generic word for God, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and the void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Okay. Now, you say, well, I don't get the Trinity out of that. Listen, you got the Father speaking. So we got God and we got the Father speaking. It says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep. So we got the Spirit of God hovering over the face of the deep. And when God speaks, that which goes forth to create is his word. And then you go to John chapter one. It says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Then he goes ahead and explains that from the very beginning, nothing is made that was not made by this Word. Then he says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He's talking about Jesus. Yes, his name in Genesis 1-1 and following is not Jesus at this point because he later will come to be the Savior of the world, but he was from the very beginning. So you have the Father speaking. We have the Son acting in creation. You have the Holy Spirit that is hovering over the face of the deep and so forth. So we see from the very get-go one God, and then we see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, you see this at the baptism of Jesus as well, where the Father speaks from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son whom I'm well pleased. We see Jesus on the earth being baptized, and John is baptizing him, John the Baptist. And then we have the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. God gave it form, gave, gave him the Holy Spirit form so that people could see that it was dwelling upon Christ, that the Holy Spirit entered down or came down and entered on to Christ. And so we see the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, again, in 1 uh, Peter, in chapter number 1, uh, verse number 2, he's talking to the saints. And he says this to the saints. We are elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, so there's one, God the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit, that's two, the Holy Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, there's the Son. So we have the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of them actively involved in our salvation, all of them uh, together. And so we need to make sure that we understand there's only one God, so Jesus is God, Father's God, Holy Spirit's God, but there is also uh, a oneness about them in, in their own in, individual way. Jesus is fully God. The Holy Spirit's fully God. 
the Father's fully God, but there's just one God. Now, that's difficult for us to grasp, except uh, God made us as one individual. I am one individual. I'm Donnie Custer. But I was created in the image of God. There's three distinct parts to me. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, where Paul says, I pray that the Lord God would sanctify you wholly or completely, that your entire spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord. So when God created us in his image, he made us a trinity. And that means there's three parts to Donnie. I'm a body, that's his physical part. I'm a soul, that's the word for mind. It's actually my mind, my will, my emotions. It's who I am, my personality that I have. And then also I'm a spirit that God has breathed into me, the breath of life. I have a spirit. And so we are a body, soul, and spirit. So therefore we're a trinity. Now the word trinity is not found in the Bible, but it just is a concept. Try, trinity, try means three. Unity, uni, means one. And so the word trinity just means three, one. Three in one. And uh, we need to accept it by faith, believe it, and understand it, lest we, again, like others, uh, twist the scriptures to our own destruction. And so there is the trinity. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you that you reveal yourself unto us, that we might know you. And Father, the more that we get to know you, the more we become confident in the fact that you have revealed yourself as one God. And yet, Father, we're fully convinced that your spirit is God, that Jesus is God, that the Father is God. So, Father, we accept and know that there's one God in three. We thank you that we can, can worship you, we can praise you, and that, Father, you live in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.